I finally bit the bullet and picked up a Synology NAS to consolidate all of my file storage. For those who don't know, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. In addition to file storage, I'm planning on running a Plex media server on it that will connect to my HD home run for live over-the-air TV viewing and recording. I'm going to unbox this thing and install a RAM upgrade, put the drives in, and then run through the initial setup. I'm also going to post a follow-up video for setting up a Plex server on it and connecting it to the HD home run that I mentioned, which is a network-based TV tuner that I showed off in a previous video. I'll link to both videos in the description below, and I'll include links for all the components that I used as well as any useful resources that I found, such as the Synology Drive compatibility page. I went with Synology because they do a really good job with their operating system called Disk Station Manager, or DSM for short. This thing is infinitely awesome. Beyond file storage, you can run all kinds of apps, VMs, and containers. It seems like every week I find something new that I can do with it. This device has two USB 3 ports and two gigabit Ethernet ports. The power adapter is nice and small, and this device only consumes about 15 watts of power. It comes with two Cat5e Ethernet cables. I've standardized everything on my network with Cat6, but Cat5e is probably fine since the Synology maxes out at 1 gigabit anyway. Since this Synology only has two bays, the drive configuration is more limited than one with more bays. I'm just planning to do a simple mirror, typically referred to as RAID 1. I'll be using the Synology Hybrid RAID, also known as SHR which is basically the same as RAID 1, but has a bit more flexibility in regard to future changes. The front cover plate comes off more easily than I expected. It looks like it's just held on by four grommets in the corners. The drive bays have a latch at the top that you can push on while pulling the tray out. On the right side, you can see where the RAM upgrade will go. I bought an additional 4 gigs of RAM to upgrade it to a total of 6 gigabytes, which is the published maximum for this particular CPU. There are threads on Reddit where people have successfully upgraded the RAM beyond 6GB, but just know if you do this, Synology won't support you if you contact them with an issue and you're running out of spec hardware. Just a reminder that I'll link everything in the description in case you want to buy the same stuff that I'm using, and I'll also include a link to the Synology subreddit. The RAM needs to be inserted at about a 45 degree angle and pressed down until it seats properly. Then you can pull it back towards the case until it snaps into the retaining clips that hold it in place. You can also see the drive connectors at the back of the device, which is useful to pay attention to so that you don't try to put the drive in upside down. I also bought two 12TB Seagate Ironwolf drives that are both listed on Synology's website as being compatible with the DS224+. Plus. One of the reasons I went with the 224+, Plus is because it supports hardware accelerated video transcoding. Not all Synology devices support this, so it's super important to check if the one that you're considering supports it if you're planning on running Plex. So I've mentioned Plex a few times now, and if you've never heard of it, it's a really popular media server that you can run to host local media, access content from remote Plex servers, and all sorts of other streaming-related activities. Something I wanted to call out is that Plex will only allow you to use hardware transcoding on the device that it's running on if you subscribe to Plex Pass. I'm not a huge fan of adding more monthly subscriptions if you don't have to, so I opted to get the Plex Lifetime Pass, which tends to go on sale periodically throughout the year. Okay, on with the setup. Regular desktop hard drives like I'm using here fit snugly into the tray with these sidebars that you put in place that have pins that extend into the drive's side screw holes. There are little rubber grommets that sit between the edge of the tray and the drive to help isolate it from vibrations. Smaller 2.5 inch drives are also supported, but must be screwed into the tray with the bag of screws that was included with the Synology. Alright, we have the drives in and all we need to do is slap the cover back on. I have to admit, the cover design is kind of weird. You have to put it in place and kind of squish the corners to get the grommets to seat into the corners of the case. Now all we have to do is plug in power and ethernet and we're ready to power this thing on. Once we locate the Synology in a browser, we can connect to it and go through the first time setup, which we'll want to install Disk Station Manager on the drives. I did encounter a little bit of weirdness where the UI told me to wait for the Synology to reboot, but it never turned back on. So I just manually pressed the power button to turn it back on and it picked up right where it left off. So you have to enter a device name and create the administrator account. Pretty standard stuff. It will ask you if you want to create a Synology account, which is a cloud-based thing, but just note that you don't need to do this if you don't want to. I skipped it during initial setup, but I ended up creating one later. You need to tell Synology how you want it to manage the drives. This is where you'll see the options for SHR and RAID 1. SHR is the default option, and I already know that that's the one I want to use anyway, so that's what I'm going to go with. Then I'm going to select both drives to apply this to. And I also want it to perform a drive check just to make sure that everything's okay. 
For the volume capacity, I'm just going to select the max option, which is for 12 gigs. In case this wasn't clear, I technically have two 12 gig drives, totaling 24 gigs, but because one drive is mirroring the other for redundancy, I can actually only use 12 gigs. In this situation, if one of the drives fails, I won't lose my data because it's mirrored to the other drive. For the file system type, I'm going to go with the default option for BTRFS. EXT4 has been the standard forever, but BTRFS has more features, and Synology places limitations around EXT4, such as requiring BTRFS if you want to run a virtual machine. You have the option to encrypt the whole volume, but I'm not going to do this because you can encrypt specific folders later on if you want to. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribing. Hope to see you in the next video where I set up Plex and connect it to my HD home run. Catch you in the next one.